Well, howdy folks, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can refill your cooling system without using one of these, or even worse, one of these. Well, I posted a link on my YouTube page about a vacuum coolant refilling tool that was on sale for a pretty reasonable price, I thought. And I had several guys ask if I could make a video about what the tool is, how it's used, and more importantly, why anybody would need one. So anybody who's ever filled up the cooling system on a vehicle knows that it's a pain in the butt to do it at all, let alone do it, you know, do it correctly. So this is a tool I use a lot. It's a, a gooseneck jug. It holds, I think it holds about two gallons, maybe three gallons of coolant. And then you can use that long neck to reach the radiator cap and fill up your cooling system. Works really good on tractors and trucks and things that are kind of open and the fill location is fairly high. It does not work good on cars or, you know, pickup trucks where the... I'll show you. So the problem with the gooseneck jug on a car or a pickup truck is that, you know, I can only get it basically this close before I have to start tipping it. And as soon as you tip it, it's going to start pouring coolant out and it's basically going to run everywhere before you actually get it connected to the, the surge tank. That's not a good solution for this vehicle. Uh, it does work pretty good on like semi trucks and stuff because usually the surge tank's right over on the side where it's easy to fill. Uh, the other tool of course you can use is a funnel, but anybody who's watched the channel for any amount of time knows that I hate funnels. They're terrible tools. They're always dirty. They're always falling out. You never have the right size or shape. Now there are some funnels made specifically for cooling systems, like Lyle makes the no spill funnel where it has a little valve you pull up to allow more coolant in. You can just shut that off so it doesn't spill everywhere. So really your only option with this vehicle is to use a funnel, but you know it has all the problems that funnels have. It flops all over, it doesn't fill very quickly, and then the worst problem you can have is that the surge tank fills up and you still have some coolant in the funnel and then it all runs out. So that's not a good solution either. Now in the old days, I used to work in a truck repair shop and the way we would fill the coolant system was we'd put a submersible electric pump in our catch pan down here and then run a hose up to the radiator or the surge tank and we would just electrically pump the coolant in that way. And that worked pretty well as long as you didn't have any major air locks. Now another concern with filling a cooling system has to do with air locking or air pockets in the system. This is a schematic view of the cooling system of an International DT-466E. It's just one that I happen to have on the top of the pile. But this cooling system schematic is greatly simplified. There's a lot of things missing. For instance, they don't show the heater core. They don't show the air compressor. This engine does not have an EGR cooler, but if it did have an EGR cooler, that would also have a coolant passage. So what happens is when we fill the cooling system, we're going to fill it through the surge tank, and it's going to basically fill up the engine block by bypassing the water pump. The problem is that the thermostat is going to be closed because the engine is is cold. So when the thermostat is in the cold position, the coolant is supposed to bypass the radiator and the, the water pump basically circulates it around inside the engine. And then when the thermostat's fully open, it blocks that off and forces the coolant to travel all the way through the radiator before it gets circulated back through the engine block. Now in the old days, what they used to do is give you a bleed screw. Usually it was on the thermostat housing. And I know that the mechanical DT-466 has a bleed screw on the thermostat housing. I think I actually have a video showing that. Maybe I'll throw in a little clip. <laughs> Alright, did everybody hear that? It popped my bleed screw completely out and started pouring coolant all over the floor. Well, this is the bleed screw I was talking about on top of the thermostat housing. I'm not sure, it might be for a, a heater application or something, but works pretty good for bleeding the system out. But the DT-466E does not have any provision to bleed the air out of the cooling system. Now luckily there's a solution to all of these problems, and that is vacuum coolant refilling, or vacuum coolant filling. That's what we're going to talk about today. So I've got two tools here. One on the right is an eBay special. Uh, it's a no-name tool. It has no manufacturer's mark on it. I'm sure it's made in China. I think I paid about $45 for this tool. It does work quite well, but the quality of it is, is pretty poor. Most of the components are plastic. The hoses are really cheesy. It only comes with one adapter, this little tapered job. 
and the case is terrible. It takes longer to put the thing back into this case than it does to actually fill the cooling system. It's, it's functional, but it's not a high quality tool. Now on the flip side, this OEM tools 24444 is currently on sale for, on Amazon for like $57.17, I think. So it's only about $10 more expensive and the quality is, is incomparable. You know, this thing's all aluminum. These are aluminum extrusions, nicely plated fittings. The valves are a lot bigger, easier to manipulate. Everything about it is better. It comes with a nice selection of adapters. It also has this expandable plug here that we're going to talk about more in a minute. Much better tool. Well, I bought the eBay special because I was kind of on the fence about vacuum cooling as a, as a whole. I wasn't familiar with it. I wanted to just kind of dip my toe in and see if I was going to like it. And immediately I regretted not buying a better quality tool. So don't buy one of these, buy one of these. Now, if you're outside the US uh, or it's past, you know, well past this date, which is around Memorial Day uh, 2020, the price is probably gonna be a lot different, but this same tool is sold by other companies, uh, specifically Mario, Super Mario's Diagnostics. He has a video about this exact same tool, but it's marketed as a Schwaben brand tool it's identical in every way so I know they're being you know I don't know who actually makes it but somebody makes it and sells it or markets it through multiple different companies so look around I mean Jegs sells this the same one for about 65 bucks I think Summit Racing sells a, a selection of them as well anyway I'm not affiliated with either of these companies I do get a little kicker on the Amazon affiliate link if you guys buy this one through that link if you don't want to do that no worries you know, I had to pay for both of these out of my own pocket, and I'm happy to do that. I think now that I have this one, I'm probably going to pass this one along. I'll probably give it to my brother or something like that, because I don't need two of them, but it does work. Well, the first step is going to be to mount the tool onto the surge tank in this case, or the radiator cap, whichever your vehicle might have. So I'm going to use an adapter. Now this surge tank has a lip right here. So I don't think we're going to be able to get down past that lip, so we're probably just going to be on this top shoulder. But I think that'll be okay. So we'll stick that in there. It says 40 millimeter on it. And then we'll jam this guy in. And we'll give her a little tweak here. So it kind of wants to push out of there, but that's okay because the vacuum is going to help pull it down. It doesn't have to be that tight. Really, we just want it to not, you know, flop around while we're trying to get everything set up. So I think that's all right. We're only talking about atmospheric pressure, so 14.7 PSI, one bar. It's really not that much. Now step two, we're going to put the hose in the coolant, like so. And then I'm going to use this little clamp here to just kind of hold that. Now as we fill it, we're going to have to kind of tilt the drain pan a little bit so that all the coolant runs over here by the hose. Okay, next up we got to hook up our air supply. So that's this side of the tool, or this part of the tool. This is actually a Venturi. So compressed air is going to pass through this section of the tool, and it's going to use a Venturi action to create a vacuum. And I like that they idiot proof this by using a different style fitting, so you couldn't accidentally hook your shop air up to this and blow up the system. So we'll hook that up like so. Now this brings up the only problem that I've had with this tool, which is that it comes with this Milton M style fitting, and I could not get that to seal up. It just threads all the way in and bottoms out. So I grabbed a regular, actual for real, made in USA Milton fitting out of my parts bin, and it threads right in and seals right up. So I don't know if that was a, a mistake on my part. I'm supposed to use some kind of special sealer, or if it's just a poor quality fitting. Whatever, no big deal. I put my own fitting in it and everything's fine. At this point, all the valves should be turned off and we're gonna hook up compressed air, just like that. Okay, at this point, we're ready to start pulling a vacuum. So I'm gonna open this valve and this valve and it's probably gonna get pretty loud. So I may actually mute this part of it. Now this hose right here is the outlet for the air that goes through the Venturi. If you still have coolant in your cooling system, there's a chance it's gonna get sucked up and blown out of this hose. So you wanna point that towards the new guy and then turn on the valve. Yeah. 
evaporating your hose is flat. Okay, we got down to about 25 inches of mercury vacuum. That's about as far as we're gonna be able to go with this type of a system. And then when you shut it off, you wanna make sure you shut this one off first, this valve between the venturi and the tool. If you shut this one off here at the air supply first, the air can actually back flow from the venturi into the tool and you'll lose your vacuum. So just make sure you hit this one first. So at this point, the system is completely vacuumed out. So you see all the Radiator hoses are collapsed, the upper radiator hose, the lower radiator hose completely flat. And we can leave this system actually under a vacuum for as long as we want and use this as a leak test. So if it's capable of leaking air in and decaying the vacuum, then it could leak coolant out. Okay, I'm satisfied that there's no leaks in the system. So what I'm gonna do is actually something that I learned from Mario at Super Mario Diagnostics in his video about this tool. We're actually gonna turn the air, the Venturi back on and use that to suck the coolant up to the top of the fill hose here and get rid of any air that's in this fill hose. You know, just like an AC system, when you fill it, you wanna bleed the lines out. So we might as well use the Venturi system to get as much of that air out as possible. So we'll start with this one. Open that one, and then open this one very slowly. You see it coming up. Okay. Now at this point, I can unhook the air system. We don't need that anymore. So here we go. We'll start filling the system. Just open this valve, and away we go. We should start seeing our hoses filling back up. Okay, we're still under vacuum. Now I'm going to have to tip this drain pan a little bit. I'll just use my foot to do that. You see the surge tank is filling up. Now it's going to start drawing it into the radiator through the vent hose. So this is the total amount of coolant that it was not able to suck up. About two shot glasses worth. That's it, we're done. Well, I'll show you how this cheapo eBay tool works. It only comes with one adapter, which is this cone-shaped gizmo. And that actually works fine. I've been able to fill most systems using just that cone. 
And then it has something that I just dropped. What was that? Radiator cap. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's going to clip into this adapter with a little piece of hose. Can you guys see that? And it comes with this chain that you're supposed to hang from something. I find that to be pretty much useless. I guess we can kind of hang it from the hood here. And then on this one, the air hose connection is permanently attached, but the suction hose that goes down to the, the, the drain pan can actually be removed. And then this one basically functions exactly the same way. So this push button here turns on the air supply. This opens the venturi to the tool and then this one allows the coolant to come up from the drain pan so same idea just a little bit different way of going about it i like to rinse the hoses out with some water before i put the tool away and then the nice thing about this this oem tools brand is the case the case is so nice you just drop the tool in it close it up and you're done nothing to it now check out the operation on this thing so you got to disconnect this hose and then coil it all up and then it goes in this little pocket up here maybe uh, by the way another big difference between these tools is the little filter on the end this one on the cheap tool it's just a little screen that's held in with an o-ring and i've gotten you know gotten that plugged up pretty easily this oem tools one is a lot bigger and more more robust that's a lot better deal anyway as far as putting this thing back in this case you gotta unhook the adapter, drop that in here, and the hose gets all wrapped around like that. Somehow. And this little chain thing goes in here, and then this hose, I don't even know. I guess it kind of goes like that. It doesn't really want to fit with the air hose adapter on there. Come on. All right, we're just going to do the old, the old suitcase trick. Ha, got it. Simple as that. If you guys noticed in the video, trying to reach from the surge tank on this pickup down to the drain pan basically used up all the length of that fill hose that we had. It was stretched pretty tight. So on a pickup or a car, that's fine. But on a semi truck or a tractor or something, a lot of times the surge tank is way up here, almost over top of your head. And the hose is not long enough to reach from that height down to the drain pan. And the higher that the fill point is, the harder it is to pull the coolant from the floor all the way up to that height. So you're gonna have a harder time getting the, the system to suck all the coolant back in. So what I've been doing, and I know it's not an option for everybody, is I take the coolant drain pan and I put it on the forks of my forklift and actually raise it up to a height where the hose will reach and the system is, you know, has an easier time filling. So probably what I'll do in the future is I'll just pop this fitting out here and put a quick disconnect on so that I can make up different hoses for it so I can make a longer fill hose and then I can make a couple of you know kind of fill hoses for different fluids because it would be nice to be able to use this for power steering fluid or even brake fluid in certain applications like clutches that have a remote mount master cylinder that might be kind of handy but it works fine for right now and like I said the build quality is pretty good the only problems I've had with it are that the supplied air fitting wasn't very good. I noticed that this gauge isn't really the greatest. The, the housing of it's actually pretty loose. So it must just be have screws at the very bottom so I can easily kind of rotate that. But that doesn't really affect how it works. And the case is really nice. All right, folks, there you go. Vacuum filling your cooling system with the OEM Tools 24444 Air Vac Cooling System Refiller. Works pretty good. I'll put a link in the description or the comment box or something for where you can buy this thing if you so choose. I will also put a link to Super Mario Auto Diagnostics. You guys should check him out. It's got a lot of cool case studies. What else will I do? No, no. 
Anyway, the point of the video is not to sell you a product, it's to sell you a concept, which is vacuum filling your cooling system. And it's a great idea. I actually had never used one of these tools until I bought that cheapo eBay tool. And the very first time I used it, I thought, well, you know, why did I wait so long to get one of these? This is not a new concept. These have been around for a long time. It's just, I'm a little bit slow on the uptake. And we're starting to see now where some OEMs are recommending or even requiring vacuum filling of the cooling system. I know specifically Navistar International is recommending it for any of their engines that have EGR coolers. And it's a bad day when you get an airlock in an EGR cooler. So thanks guys for watching. See you next time.